What's up guys, welcome back. There's not gonna be a silly intro today because this is a very serious topic. That being said though, I, what are you doing? I'm trying to be serious here, yeah? Stop that. All right, so I wanna just show you guys some pieces that I made recently, none of which I've posted online. And I absolutely hate showing pieces that I'm not happy with the people. So, <sighs> But that's part of growing. I'm gonna be perfectly candid with you guys today. Sometimes I hate my art. Sometimes I step away from that canvas and I look at the piece that I just made and I wonder to myself, what the heck did you just spend the last two hours on? Now, if you guys are artists and you feel the same thing that I feel, maybe stick around for this video and we'll see if we can help each other out. For myself and my work, I feel like I go through periods of highs and lows and highs and lows. There are many months where I produce some of my favorite pieces of all time. And then there's also months where it seems like every other piece I just absolutely hate. And the past couple of months for me have been the latter. I've been making pieces that I hated with the occasional diamond in the rough. I'll try to show you guys as many of the pieces that don't get posted as possible. Now you might be watching this video, you might be seeing these pieces and you're like, what is this guy talking about? These look perfectly fine. What is he on about, huh? Shut up. But trust me guys, every single artist is their own worst critic. And I am no exception to that. I've got this little voice in my head that's just blah, 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 you stop. So I guess on the grand scheme of things, I've been going through the highs and the lows. And right now at this moment, I feel like my art is at a low. And I'm sure you guys can relate. Some days, some weeks, some months, or maybe even years, you do some gr crazy art. You close your eyes, you let out a fart, and all of a sudden you have a masterpiece on your canvas. And then other days, you're just you can't come up with anything. And that might continue for a long time, just piece after piece after piece. You're not inspired. You're not really doing anything that's impressing yourself. So this whole thing, it's just really got me thinking as to why does this even happen? Why am I having this just monotonous art slump where my stuff doesn't suck, but it doesn't really speak to me. And that's when I realized what's gone wrong here. I'm not actually learning. That's a bit of a problem, isn't it? And this is something that I think might be the key to getting out of a slump. So I started thinking to myself, when was the last time I actually sat my butt down and really went down the rabbit hole to try to study the art of somebody who inspired me? I was like, when was the last time you did that? I don't know. Must have been a year ago. There is the problem. And what's especially noticeable in some of the pieces that I'm not happy with is the fact that the faces of the characters, they lacked character. No pun intended. <laughs> Might not be apparent to you, but I see like such stiffness in some of the lines that construct the eyes, the irises, you know, this kind of almost suffocating attention to accuracy and detail. And this is when I've realized that I've kind of just stopped practicing being a little bit uncomfortable. Really the higher your skill level climbs in art, the harder you've got to try to get out of that comfort zone, you know, and the more difficult it is to actually get out of your comfort zone because your comfort zone is growing. And that was me sitting on my big ass being comfortable. The thing with me is I'm on YouTube, I'm on Patreon, and I'm always trying to share the things that I know with people who are trying to learn art. So most of this kind of artistic knowledge has been going outwards and I haven't taken the time to really suck it in. Pause. But you know, you get a little busy, things get a little bit distracting and you're like, you know what, we're gonna, we're gonna take it easy today. And next thing you know, that turns into two days, three days, a week, three months, and all of a sudden you've gone months without really challenging yourself, you know, without taking the time to actually absorb information, to actually suck in more ways than one, not in that way. So you're gonna see some footage here in this video of me studying the works of artists who inspire me. Absolute legends like Glenn Keane and Jin Kim. And these are artists who are able to do things that I could only dream of. And this is the kind of sucking that I'm talking about. Not only are you sucking in information like a sponge, you're actually trying to do something that you might suck at. Now you might be looking at these drawings and you're thinking, these look fantastic. What are you talking about? Be patient with me. My brain naturally gravitates towards drawing realistically. I've accepted this, but stylization does not come naturally to me. The only reason that you see so many stylized characters for me is because I've worked extremely hard to try to learn it. And I still absolutely cannot confidently say that I've mastered the art of stylization. If you were to give me a reference and ask me to stylize it in this way, it's not exactly gonna be a walk in the park for me. I'm gonna be struggling a little bit. I'm gonna be clenching my cheeks. And my brain naturally defaults back to being this OCD, hyper fixated, you know, this super 
critical and super detail oriented kind of way of drawing. And that's not how I like to work. That's not how I produce my best pieces. But that's the direction that my brain likes to naturally pull itself in. And I don't like that. Now, if you ever face the same struggles and you realize that you're in a bit of a slump with your work, you haven't really been happy with many pieces that you've been producing, try to see if you can identify some habits. You know, maybe you work really tight and tense, or maybe you're like me, you kind of go over the small details over and over again, overthinking things, try to figure out this kind of natural tendency that you have that might be actually detrimental to your work. And ask yourself, what's the direction that you want your work to go in, right? Try to identify that and see if there's people out there who are doing what you want to do. Now, for me, I would love to just be able to so effortlessly stylize characters like Jin Kim does. I still have a hard time with that. You know, just one of the recent pieces that I posted, I put it up and then I came back to look at it like five hours later, I was like, I hate the face on this character. This is not what I wanted. So that's why for my own needs, for the things that I'm lacking in, I'm studying the works of these animators and these kind of classical Disney type of stylization because I genuinely haven't put my head down and tried to learn this in a long time and I've been feeling the effects of that, which I feel like might be surprising to you guys as well. Cause you might see the work that I make and you might think, oh, he's got this down. You know, there's nothing that really troubles him, but there really is a lot, right? And it's like this for every single artist. So you gotta learn, you just gotta keep learning. You gotta face the things that you suck at. You gotta face them head on. And I think it cannot be overstated how important it is to turn to others for inspiration because other people will always see things differently than you do. And if you, like me, have spent too much time with yourself, you only look at references and you only look at your own art, guess what that is? That's a blinder. You lose sight of what you could be. Whatever patterns, whatever comfortable kind of way of working your brain is reverting back to, get out of that. For me, it's just hyper fixating on details, you know, working on things that don't even, it's not even going to be visible in the final piece. Just overthinking things like the position of an eye. Whereas I see the work of Glenn Keane and the eye is so big and it's in a position that if I were to see that on my own art, I would be pulling out the liquefy tool, but he just left it. He just leaves it like that. And that doesn't come naturally to me. And that's something I've got to work on. And unfortunately I've forgotten to work on it because sometimes we all get artistic dementia. So if you're not in a slump right now, I hate you. But if you are, absolutely get out there, find people who inspire you, find the things that you're not happy with in your own art. Find that thing that you keep sliding back to, find the thing that you keep reverting back into. I want you to take your hand like this, put it in a fist and punch it in the face, okay? For me, stylization, I, I need to work on that. I need to work on my shapes. Maybe after that, the next thing could be looking at rendering and how other artists render in their work and see if I can find some more elements to incorporate into mine. And that's what you gotta do. You gotta find people who inspire you, who genuinely make you go, what the heck, in the specific thing that you're trying to improve in. So if you're a little baby artist, or you could be an art god watching this video, and you're feeling some of the same things that I'm feeling, just know that we all go through this, okay? Even the people you look up to, I'm sure even Glenn Keane and Jin Kim go through this. This is just part of what we sign up for as artists in this masochistic, pursuit of art. So I don't know how many people are going to resonate with this video, but I just wanted to be candid and put this out there for you guys so that you know that you're not alone, that maybe the artist that you look up to is going through the exact same thing as you. It really doesn't matter what skill level you're at, you know, how much artistic knowledge you have. It's a never ending journey of learning and being open to potentially sucking. So hey, if you're doing great, you're making the best art of your life, screw you. But if you're struggling like me, I'm right here with you. I'm standing right next to you. And you know what? When you take that first big step out of your comfort zone, when you finally confront your demons, I'm going to be right there next to you as well. All right? We got this. That's all I had to say for today. See you guys on the next video. Now, for those of you guys who might be worried about my mental sanity, don't worry. I literally go through this every single year. <laughs> it's kind of part of the process now where I get inspired, I start learning things, I start absorbing things, and then things start trailing off. I forget to learn, I forget to get uncomfortable, and I fall back into one of these, right? And then I gotta pick myself back up again and be like, whoa, 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 we gotta stop this. Let's take that step outside of the comfort zone. I guess we always talk about, you know, everyone's gonna start somewhere, your art's gonna suck for a while, and it's gonna get better. But we don't talk about how, you know, maybe after you've gotten a bit better, you're gonna have your downs and your ups, and your downs and your ups, and it's gonna be like that for almost the entirety of your career. It is what it is, man. <laughs>